thing and it's really a good opportunity to speak to you about our heritage and culture as a cultural expert and someone with great experience from the Kalinago territory. So tell us about yourself and your knowledge of the significance of the Creole heritage within the history or Kalinago history. I'm Gregory Rabes from the Commonwealth of Dominica. I was born in the village of Waraka or Atkinson, which is on the fringe of the Kalinago territory in Dominica. I was basically born and raised in that part of Dominica. So I have first-hand experience and knowledge of the Kalinago community, um, having relatives from the Kalinago territory. My grandmother, in fact, was um, from the Kalinago territory. And that's where I was brought up. That's where I have lived basically all my life. Uh, apart from that, I also have, um, well, I mean, through my education in prime, in secondary school, um, lived in the capital rules in the urban area. And of course, later on in life, I got involved in the, what you might consider the Creole culture and the development of the wider Creole culture of Dominica. So my experience uh, is on the basis of that, the Kalinago culture and the Creole culture. And in terms of my own life experiences, by, I'm a communicator by formal training, but by my own involvement has to do with culture, Creole activism, cultural research, folk research, and also as an artist, as a musician, a poet, um, you know, composer, author, composer. Um, so I'm really involved in a wide range of the arts and also arts research and also communication. So that's my general background. How important is the Creole heritage to Dominica? Well, it's, the Creole heritage is very important because it is really the basis of the present living culture of Dominica. It's the, the Creole heritage. Heritage is what has been passed on from generation to generation. So it represents a sort of body of knowledge, a body of, of material things, skills and knowledge that... Um, has been handed down through the generations and on the basis of that body of knowledge we can use it to basically um, develop the culture in the present day context of Dominica engage young people in terms of the continuity of cultural tradition in terms of develop, developing our cultural policies and actions that emanate from our cultural policies our vision for Dominica, our vision for development, linking culture and economy, linking culture and tourism, entertainment, developing the cultural industries. So to develop in the new dispensation, in the area of globalization, you have to anchor all of that on the heritage. And we do have a rich cultural heritage in Dominica, so that's the importance of that. Of course, um, well, that's it, really. Uh, are there any, based on your There's always much more work to be done. I think in Dominica we have done quite a lot in terms of um, revitalizing the Creole culture, the Kalinago culture as well. I mean, and that goes way back to the 60s, to the days of um, Edward Oliver Leblanc, Mabel C.C. Calderon. And so that was the, 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 the sort of work that was done at the political level and the cultural level by these two icons and leaders. Um, Libla at the political level and Cordero at the Creole cultural level. So that was the work um, in Dominica in the lead up to autonomy, that's internal self-government, and then moving to political independence. So that was the first, you might say, period of um, cultural nationalism in Dominica. And then following independence, we had a new period where um, in terms of the music, the creation of in, um, indigenous or local homegrown um, genres like Cadence Lipso, and of course you had 
um, the, the emergence of a wide range of cultural groups, indigenous theater, um, you know, you had that um, happening. And then uh, uh, the, the growth of the Creole movement uh, in terms of establishing the Comité Poetic Creole that, that would sort of guide the process of development of the Creole language and culture from the 80s. And of course, within that, you had many initiatives like June Creole, um, International Creole Day, you had Heritage Day, um, the various pageants. So you had the invention of new traditions in the new um, dispensation, so to speak. And um, in fact, um, we do have some good examples of what we call best practice and some success, success stories, sorry, in terms of the development of the Creole culture in Dominica. But having said that, there are some um, trends uh, of concern. There are some of the, 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 the aspects of the, the tradition, like storytelling, that is in decline. Um, so we have to address that. And one of the ways to address that is to engage the school, the school system, the formal education more, and the communities at another level, the youth, uh, in terms of those traditions and um, do undertake various projects and initiatives that would get them uh, more engaged in perpetuating those traditions. We do have some good examples in the music, for example, the bouillon, um, and even the cadence before of the 70s, but the bouillon of the present generation is in fact a sort of a modernization of some of the um, traditional forms of music in Dominica. So, so the young people are in fact engaging musically, engaging with the language as well, but then there's more work to be done. Well, the first thing is that you learn by observing. So basically, we we observed what the older folks were doing, and the second way as well is that you are living in the environment. So so you basically you 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 grow. You are immersed in the environment. Um, in the Creole culture, and it just, it just, it's like osmosis. <laughs> it's osmosis in that sense. So, so in that sense, it's more about observing. I mean, I spoke Creole as long as I remember. Nobody really taught me to speak Creole. It's just, I always, from the time I reach the age of reason, I'm speaking Creole. So, 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 in terms of that. It's more, more believe in heritage. Yes, yes, at the time, because remember, I was born and I raised in the period of the. 60s, right? 50s, 60s as a young. So that was a period when Dominica was moving from sort of the tradition or the traditional um, sort of society, you might say, into a more modern society. It was the period when roads were being developed. Um, you had indigenous um, institutions emerging. You had the, the new cultural renaissance. You know, so it was. So I was. I was fortunate actually to have been born in the period when Dominica was still very um, so-called undeveloped, the infrastructure and so on, um, where you had a very rich tradition, oral tradition, and then of course in the modern era with um, information and communication technology and the internet and so on, and so on. So, so yes, I was very. So, so I, I basically, I'm a self-taught musician. For example, I taught myself to play all the various instruments that I play. So it's really by growing up in the culture, living in the culture. As I, I never really had any formal training in, in, in cultural practices per se. The only formal training I really had was um, communication, uh, which, which I studied at university level. But in terms of the cultural skills and knowledge, it is more about the informal way of learning um, you know, like, for example, we were very much involved in popular theater at one stage for the movement for cultural awareness, and we, 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 we did numerous, numerous workshops in Dominica and the region and employed resource persons, um, people like Ross Kidd, for example, who imparted um, popular theater and popular education methodologies. So that was, for me, in terms of working in culture, that, that, that process through popular theater and popular education 
really, you might say, armed me to to sort of do that, you might say, organizational work in culture, right? But I grew up naturally as a musician, involved in doing the Syrian tradition, because I lived in the tradition. And then further on, I did more formal training at university level. And then marrying all that traditional knowledge with the technical knowledge which I acquired through, through the university and the, 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 the popular education methodologies and marry all of that into the present day work that I do. So how then do you think we need to engage the younger generation? Because the eyes of the different era. How do we engage the younger people? Okay. The way we engage the younger people is, for, is to encourage what they actually already do and they like and love. And the young people naturally um, are very much influenced by a globalized culture. Okay? So it means, therefore, we have to find ways to make a link between the what we call the Creole culture and some traditional aspects of it with some aspects of the sort of global view that the young people have. And in so doing, anchor, help them to anchor whatever they do in the performing arts, in culture generally, on the Creole culture. So it's a question, one, of training, engaging them in terms of training, um, and passing on skills and knowledge in various dimensions, in the arts and, and the wider um, aspects of culture. Um, so that's one of the training is very, very, very important to do that and also to engage them in what they already do in terms of fashion, in terms of cuisine, in terms of music, the dance, the arts, poetry and so on. Okay, you might say there is a sort of a divide in Dominica, you know, that, for example, uh, an age divide. You find that the, the majority of, of fluent Creole speakers are in the, in the, like, say, the 40, above 40, 50, 60 old um, bracket. And the, you also have a rural urban divide as well. So you find that Creole is more widely spoken in the rural communities as opposed to the urban areas. And even within that, um, the young persons, you'll find more um, young people from the rural communities speak Creole as opposed to young people from the urban um, areas. But having said that, um, even in the rural communities, you do have a, a, a decline in Creole speaking among the young um, primary and secondary um, school age at the moment. I mean, you, you would go to schools in some of the rural communities, secondary schools, primary schools, and many of the students can't speak Creole. Some of them can understand some Creole, and that same thing applies to the, the adult population. Yeah, so in terms of, of speaking the Creole language, we do have this sort of um, urban-rural uh, divide, and also, also the age uh, divide. So, uh, so we have two tendencies, actually, at the moment. In, in relation to the Creole language. We have a tendency that, that, that um, we might say, is an impelling factor uh, into those speaking Creole, and then we have another tendency that is doing the opposite in terms of the decline, yeah? So, in terms of the decline, of course, we have the influences of, 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 of um, the global culture, and, and so the fact that Creole is not being taught in the schools, Okay, so that, that is an issue in terms of um, the continuation of the spoken Creole among the young people, the very young people. But at the same time, we do have um, some impelling factors for the popular music, because the popular music in Dominica is still very much driven by the French Creole. And we also have the presence, increasing presence of the Haitian community here in Dominica, and they speak Creole. And we also do have a a thriving um, huckster trade um, between Dominica and Guadeloupe and Martinique next door, which are French speaking and also Creole speaking. So the fact that you have this constant movement of people and the new wave of Haitian immigration here in Dominica, that, that helps to, to, to promote the greater use of Creole in our society. So 
uh, in terms of from the point of the, the, the committee created Creole, uh, our major strategy for preserving and continuing continuing the the, the the spoken Creole is to introduce Creole language as a subject of learning in schools. And of course, apart from that, uh, we are doing like the production of certain important texts, like the Creole Dictionary, um, have the Creole language more visible in the society on billboards and posters, on the internet, and popularize more the um, standard um, writing system for Creole. So these are some of the strategies that we employ to um, preserve and develop the Creole language in Dominica. And of course, we are also looking at the policy areas for Creole in terms of a language policy, and, the, and that would also engage the formal education system in Creole. And of course, we just um, had recently had a conference on Creole here in Dominica, and um, we looked at some of the, the, well, the various sectors and a series of recommendations, um, very interesting recommendations were put forward um, for advancing the Creole language and culture in some of the key sectors, Creole and the economy, Creole and tourism, Creole and education, Creole and the media. So these recommendations, um, which were put forward by a, a wide cross-section of stakeholders, will be used as a sort of a roadmap for the next 10, 20 years in terms of our development strategies for the preservation and development of Creole language and Creole culture here in Dominica. Is there any part of the heritage of culture, the one thing that we see is from dying or has died that we really feel like a I And we know we mentioned the language, but in your past experience, of course, the is that you can look for heritage. Is there this one thing that you really wish to buy or safeguard and stop more effectively? I would, I think I'll come down storytelling actually, storytelling, yes. This I think we need to develop, I mean there are some important strategies that we use here in Dominica actually. During independence celebrations we do have a story um, telling competition, we do have a competition in Kokoi, Kokoi is like the English Creole that is spoken in Marigot and Wesley and Clifton, three communities, specific communities in Dominica, and we do have the competition in the French Creole, which is more spoken in other parts of Dominica. So that, that these competitions help, but, but we have to do more. We have to engage the younger people, um, and the schools, will have, they have a very important role for the schools in terms of storytelling. And you can link that with poetry as well, because the, the young people, they like the rap, and they like the poetry. So it's just to use these methodologies to engage them in the storytelling tradition and have more storytelling activities within the classroom um, and within the community festivals, within community feasts. So I would really, this is what I would see as a major tradition in decline. There are a couple other um, very detailed and specific traditions. For example, there's one in particular which is like, um, referred to as Alindola, but it is a, a tradition of sort of wrestling. It's like a dance wrestling, right, that we have, we have we had in Dominica. It is really not practiced anymore in Dominica, but we know it. I mean, in Kalingago territory, um, I mean, we have recreated, I myself have done one or two um, sort of documents for our program called Nabi, on that dance tradition, but the dance tradition, that the stick fighting tradition, the wrestling tradition, which is sometimes like in Brazil is referred to as capoeira, in Martinique is referred to as damier. Um, so that tradition is very much alive in Martinique. So that particular tradition, uh, a sort of a wrestling dance tradition, I would like to see that uh, revived. Is it linked to the Kalinova, or across no, the well, it's across the island, but the fact is. Um, uh, I, I recall that the Kalinago Terry, that is probably one of the last vestiges areas that that um, tradition was practiced at nine nights, at wakes for the dead. And I mean, the, 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 when I was very young, maybe in my teens, yes, in my teens, 
these were the I would say in the 60s the I remember attending um, nine nights and participating in what we call the La One, the ring games and part of these ring games involve an element of, of wrestling um, and things of that nature but in more recent times um, because of the whole changing dynamics of, of funerals and how we manage death um, and all of that funeral homes and all of that so that has affected that um, nine night tradition and hence the sort of oral traditions including storytelling the the hand clapping bula gel tradition as well and the wrestling tradition so this this tradition is very much associated with the nine nights so that has in fact affected those traditions but we can in fact and work with some of the belly groups, the dance groups, to recreate that tradition and to have it as spectacle as well for the tourism and entertainment sector and for community festivals and for television. Okay, if there was one thing that you would say to the younger generation or maybe even our elders or to cultural experts or young aspiring cultural artists Okay, well, as a general rule for everybody, young and old, young and old, we have to have a less free creole. By that, I mean a creole attitude. So that's the that's that's the core. I think the general population, young and old, we gotta have a Creole attitude. Now, if you have a Creole attitude, yeah, it impacts on how we see ourselves, how we project ourselves to the world. It, it impacts on our identity, our, that, that, all that, 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 that dynamic of, of, of self-identification, who we are, what we are, and so on. So, that first thing, Creole attitude, for me, that's important. With that Creole attitude, then you, you, you find yourself more open as a human being to interact not only with the Creole culture and, and, and get to, to develop your skills in the various aspects of the Creole culture, but it provides you with a solid foundation as a person to engage with the various other cultural cultures of the world and the various influences that are coming so that the, you yourself can, can sift the good from the bad and, and, and absorb um, external influences, but while anchoring it on your rich Creole cultural foundation or your rich Kalinago cultural foundation. So that is my core message to 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 the people, young and old across the board. <laughs>